I think the whole league is starting to understand that data science is super crucial to performing well in basketball. And as a result, I think almost every NBA team has their own data scientist trying to help them out. Hi, I'm Henry from Springboard, and I'm here today with Jibon, a data scientist at Facebook. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks for having me. So first question is, um, how did you become a data scientist? Can you take us through your journey? I never actually planned on becoming a data scientist. I went into college wanting to do pre-med, and I actually ended up changing my major three or four times. And as I was just exploring classes and taking classes I thought were interesting, um, I ended up taking an intro data science class. And I just found that that class was so much more engaging than the other things I was taking. And so from then on, I was just trying to take more and more data science classes. And as I got more interested in it, I started looking for jobs and I, I ended up getting an internship. And then after having like a summer of doing that work was when I really realized this was something I want to pursue. Nice. And what specifically did you like about data science? I really like that in data science, we're like, we make a hypothesis with some prior knowledge. We try to assess how can we test this hypothesis, um, what data can we use, what methods do we use, and then even after making all those plans, once you start, things change and it's just very reactive, and it's just an exciting process start to end. And what were some of the interesting problems that you were able to solve, um, whether through class or at your internship? One of the projects I did in a summer internship at Sonos, which is a smart speaker company, was trying to predict if customers would buy a second pair of speakers after purchasing their first. So we were able to look at things like, does the customer have like a premium music streaming service like Spotify or, or SoundCloud? Um, and if they did, they were just much more likely to buy it. And we use that to help better market the speakers. And does Facebook have a program for undergrads doing data science? Yeah, Facebook actually hires a lot of undergrad data scientists. Super interesting, because most of the data scientists that we've spoken with have graduate school degrees. Mm -hmm. um, how does that work for someone with a bachelor's degree? I think the trend that data scientists need a graduate degree is starting to slowly die down. And the reason is that undergrad programs are starting to offer data science classes. Um, in the past, they weren't as prevalent, and so people had needed to go to grad school to learn these skills. But now you can learn everything you need in undergrad and with like so many free online tools as well. So I feel like data science is like not a career just for graduate students anymore. What kind of classes do you take as a data science major? As a data science major, most of the classes you'll take are in computer science and statistics. But we also have this thing called a domain emphasis, where you just pick some other field that you're really interested in, say biology or psychology or economics, and you take classes in those too with the hope that you take your data science knowledge and apply them in these fields. After you did your internship at Facebook, um, you returned for senior year and then went back to Facebook. What was that process like? Was it pretty smooth or did you have to interview again? No, the process was smooth. Uh, we got our return offers at the very end of our internship. So over my senior year, I didn't really have to worry about recruiting or anything. I was just like able to take classes I liked. Now that you're at Facebook, what are you working on now? My team at Facebook is called Auction and Delivery. We're a very cross-functional team. We work with a lot of people um, in sales and business on ads. We work with uh, teams all across Facebook in marketing, business, sales, to maximize the value that users and advertisers both get on the platform. In terms of the day-to-day -day work, what do you enjoy the most about data science? Day-to-day, -day, something I really like is that data science isn't something you do by yourself. I'm constantly working with other data scientists on the team to get their perspectives or people in other departments that aren't data scientists at all because they influence how we think about problems and how we might go about solving them a lot. So it's very collaborative and I think that makes it really fun. On the flip side, what would you say is the most challenging? A lot of projects you take on in data science aren't very well scoped. So you might take on a project that has like a 20% chance of success and you don't know um, is this even possible to solve until you've already spent so much time on it? But on the flip side, that's also like, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting to just like be on your toes and try to adapt as the problem evolves. When you're working on these problems, how long are these projects usually before you realize maybe it's not worth continuing? I think that can vary a lot depending on how you 
want to like plan your projects out. Some stuff I worked on lasted weeks, months, and I know of projects that have lasted years. What advice or tips would you have for someone who is currently in college that who wants to become a data scientist but don't have the data science major to uh, pursue? If you're new to data science and looking to add some stuff to your resume, I think Kaggle is a great tool. You can go on and make your own little notebook. You don't have to do a machine learning problem, although those are there. You can, you can just do exploratory analysis on their data sets. Um, and they have so many data sets that you can find something that like, you have some domain knowledge in or you're interested in. And then from there, you know, make a couple notebooks, put it, put it on your resume, try to showcase different techniques in them. One great thing you can do is look at for a particular job you're applying for. If they want, um, say they really are interested in exploratory analysis, then you can go use that skill in a Kaggle data set and then put that on your resume and then just like match the skills that you can do with what they're looking for. In terms of your personal growth, what do you see yourself learning next? I think uh, a lot of new data scientists are sort of given a project and expect you to execute. And the next big step to take is figuring out how to scope your own projects, figuring out what areas, what problems can we solve with data science. I think a great way to improve on that is you look at the projects that are going on and try to talk to the people who came up with it and get through their thought process. According to your LinkedIn profile, it seems like you play basketball, right? Yeah. I do. Can you hypothetically use data science to be a better individual basketball player or help a team win more games? Yeah, absolutely. I think the whole league is starting to understand that data science is super crucial to performing well in basketball. And as a result, I think almost every NBA team has their own data scientist trying to help them out. Um, I actually have friends that were data science students at Cal and they went on to become data scientists for NBA teams and they help them out with you know, picking the most efficient plays, trying to value players properly. Who was like the pioneer uh, in basketball analytics? I think the pioneer of basketball analytics is Daryl Morey. So there's actually a term coined after the pioneer of basketball analytics called Morey Ball, which is uh, Daryl Morey's method of, of playing basketball. And he had the Houston Rockets shooting three-pointers just way before everyone else valued them. And Soon after they noticed how effective it was, just a, a shot with a better expected value each play, all the other teams started joining along. And now you see that data science has changed the entire landscape of the league. Nowadays teams are moving so much towards the three-pointer and the open layup, and you don't see teams taking long twos anymore. There have been stories in practice where a long two is actually like negative points because it's just such a poor efficiency play. That's the way data science has influenced the game so much. So I had a friend who was a data scientist on the Brooklyn Nets, and part of his work was trying to uh, figure out a way to value their players and compare that to how the players are evaluated in the free agency market. You know, If there's some discrepancy there, if you value a player less than the market values them, then you can get positive assets from that. In today's NBA, if a player wants to maximize their value, what kind of skills should they be working on? That's actually an interesting question because the best player right now doesn't necessarily mean they perform the best on how we evaluate players right now. Because one thing is it's very hard to measure how well a player is defensively. One really important metric to evaluate your best player is their true shooting percentage. It's an advance that became a lot more popular recently as players started shooting more free throws and three-pointers because those are so much more valuable than a regular two-point shot. What's your favorite team right now? My favorite team is the Houston Rockets. Why do you think Carmelo Anthony is out of the league? I think Melo is out because he doesn't have his hoodie on. And if he puts that on, he'll be back in MVP status. I think Carmelo Anthony is sort of uh, a great player in the old league where we really did value those two-point shots a lot. But now, as we found out, three points and free throws are so much more valuable. He just doesn't have the efficiency that a lot of other players bring. And last question is, uh, what is your life motto? I think a motto that's been really important uh, in my life so far is just to not fear failure. Um, you need to be able to like 
take on some big goal or project that like there might be a high chance of you not not accomplishing it but um, that you can't let that stop you and you just have to go for it anyway awesome that's great advice um cool thank you so much for sharing your experience about data science thanks had a great time hey i'm eliza from springboard we're an online school that gets you hired all of our courses come with a job guarantee one-on-one -on -one mentorship and real world projects we teach ux design data science and machine learning engineering to learn more check out the links below Happy learning!